morning. We're here today at Silleth in West Cumbria, having a look around Silleth Town and the Solway Coast. Again, as we usually do, having a look at some of the local and natural history that is around in the area. And we're starting today at Silleth Airfield, which was one of a number of uh, airfields that was used in World War II along the Solway Coast uh, for aircraft storage for World War II. Now, mostly abandoned and used for other purposes. So this one in the case of Silleth is now an industrial estate and there are a number of different businesses that were on here using some of the old buildings that were available. So you can see hangars behind me, um, old storage units, and of course we've got the runways as well, which today is hosting a car boot sale. So we'll have a quick look at that as well. Let's go. Just outside the town of Silleth lies its former airfield. Opened in 1939 for World War II, it was used for storage and maintenance of airplanes and also for pilot training under the Coastal Command. Expanded in 1941, it had three runways and 18 hangars at its peak. During the war, it was the target of several air raids by the Luftwaffe. Following the end of the war, it was used for civil flights until closing in 1960. Today, its hangars are home to a number of businesses and a popular car boot sale. So we're now here at Silleth Seafront alongside the statue of Raymond Lonsdale and his dog sitting looking out over to the Solway Firth which is behind us. We'll have a little look around the seafront, we'll have a look at the lighthouse and further along where the amusements are and then along to the port and harbour. Let's go.
Silith has been a popular seaside destination since Victorian times, sitting on the Solway Firth coast. It increased in popularity with the arrival of the railway in the mid-19th century, offering workers from Carlisle a day at the seaside. Sadly, the railway closed in the 1960s. Silith still retains much of its charm, including a wooden lighthouse, long promenade, large green overlooked by Christchurch, pagoda, the amusement arcade housed in the former town baths, and a splash park. The outer edges of the town house a number of caravan parks and also a golf club.
Silith docks were originally developed in the mid 19th century to replace Port Carlisle, with the shifting sands of the Solway and larger ships meaning a new deep water port was needed. It also housed a large 300 metre long pier on West Beach for steamer ships, but this was washed away in World War II. A new wharf was then built to allow for construction materials for the town's airfield. Today its main cargo is a wheat, fertiliser, wood and molasses. It also houses a large flour mill for the nearby McVitie's Biscuit Factory in Carlisle. Along the coast lies the village of Morbray. On the Solway coast there are a number of concrete arrows to guide World War II Allied pilots from their nearby airfield on their bombing practice runs. Targets would be laid out in the Solway Firth. The larger arrow is 24 metres long and was originally white for smoke bombing. The smaller arrow is just 12 metres long and was painted red for live firing. Other similar arrows can be seen at Bruff Marsh and Sylcroft. The small village of Allenby lies on a long wide stretch of sand and shingle beach. Along with many other Solway villages it has a history in smuggling with stories ranging from drinks casks abandoned on the seashore to the large number of local innkeepers and merchants to the Beebe family's property wealth from their seemingly humble timber trade. It has been a sea bathing resort since the 18th century and although less fashionable than nearby Silith during its railway era is once again a popular destination for cyclists, motorbikers and car drivers. One of its main draws today is Twentyman's Ice Cream Shop, which has been in the family through four generations and celebrated its 100th birthday in 2020.
So we've almost finished our day now. We've gone from Sillith, which you saw at the beginning, come down through Allenby, had an ice cream, had a look at the uh, World War II history at Morbray, and we're now here down near Cross Cannonby, where we're having a quick look at the salt pans here, which is relatively recent history. Uh, these were used with the seawater, um, and then the water would evaporate off, leaving the salt, which could be used to um, preserve the meats and so on that were produced from the farm animals nearby. And then we're going to have a look just behind here where there is a Roman Mile Fortlet 21. This was uh, part of the outlying uh, Roman frontier defences. Obviously, Hadrian's Wall stopped quite a long way up at Bowness, um, but there were frontier defences that stretched right the way down to Maryport, which is two or three miles in this direction. Um, and there was a fort there called Alavna, um, which uh, you can visit the Senhouse Roman Museum today to learn about, but we're going to have a quick look at Fortlet 21 before we head home. 